Hey guys, good morning. It's Tara here. It is 9:45 ish uh, Eastern time, and I'm joining you live from my home office um, on Long Island in New York. And so, when you join, I would love for you to tell me where you're from. And I know we've got a lot of local Long Islanders that. Um, watch these videos and if you're from somewhere else, I would like to know where you're from too so I could say hello um, We're talking today about whether or not it's necessary to work out and In fact, we're gonna talk about whether or not it's necessary to do anything We're focusing on that word necessary, which I why I put the little asterisk next to it. I found um, And I only kind of made this connection recently, but the difference between people who go after that goal that they want to go after and who attain that goal that they want to attain um, and the people who don't quite make it, they aren't successful and they're not finding the results. The difference is whether or not they feel that the changes that they need to make are necessary. So I'm going to start off by talking about working out here. So there's two types of people who work out consistently. Those who just love it and they've got a huge passion for it and the the bigger group of people, the more common group of people, are those who just feel like they need to do it. Humans are really interesting and we we seek out comfort and that's what we're supposed to do. It's, it's a survival mechanism and it's a normal thing. We don't want to change. The only way that we will make a change usually is if we feel that uh, the discomfort we're going to go through in making the change is going to end up leading us to more comfort eventually. Okay, so we don't want to normally put us through a lot of discomfort. So you have to really be in a position where you feel like you need to make a change, which is why a lot of times, um, and unfortunately, people will come seek out the services of myself or any number of other healthcare professionals out there once there's already been something that's happened, like for example, a major diagnosis, um, a, a very obvious loss in um, in function, you know, or being able to take care of yourself, or something, some sort of pain. There's really something that's come on. That's typically when people decide to make a change. Very few people, although there are some, but very few people will just preemptively say I want to I'm feeling healthy and I want to keep feeling healthy and I know I need to kind of up my game as I get older to make sure that I continue to feel healthy um, it does happen and I think it is starting to happen more and more people are finally buying into the idea that health is a maintenance thing you can't just um, take it for granted it's not going to be there forever so you really have to do your best to try to grasp it and and kind of up level to the next level so it's when we really believe that it's something that we need to do that we do it. So if you think about other areas of your life, um, think about your to-do list. I'm a list person. I don't know if you're a list person too. Um, if you're a list person, then you've probably found that you pack your to-do list with more things than you ever could accomplish in a day, okay? I'm totally, totally guilty of this. And by the end of the day or maybe mid-afternoon, you start to realize that you will not be able to complete everything on the list. And you start to really take a look and prioritize like, okay, this has to happen today. This has to happen today for whatever reason. This other thing over here, yeah, it's not really so necessary. And we start to cross things off of our list for today and we start to move them to, let's say, the next day or the next week or whatever. We're just moving those things all around. Now, if let's say working out is, is a big part of your ultimate goal um, for whatever you want to use that to get to, you want to live longer, you want to have more agility, you want to reduce some anxiety, you want to lose weight, whatever reason that you want to work out more consistently. If you haven't committed that to be a need,
maybe. Oh, now it says connection available. All right. Hopefully everything was good. Okay, so I was talking about being a nurse in the maternity area and watching moms after surgery, like super women, get up so that they can go and be with their babies in the NICU. It was a big difference, especially we had three different levels of um, postpartum care. So women can be on the fifth floor, their babies might be in the NICU all the way down on the third floor and like across the hospital. It was a long way to go. Yes, we would assist them with wheelchairs, but they still had to get in and out of bed. I even saw times where you know, it would take us some time to get the wheelchair and those moms did not want to miss a feeding or anything and they would just get up and walk without the wheelchair. It is unbelievable to see. Now, if a mom had a C-section and, and were able to bring her baby to her, which by the way I, is great, and I think that we should do that when we can. I think we should let women recover and bring their babies to them and help support them in any way that we can. But when there is a, a need with the baby being across um, to get a higher level of care in the NICU, those moms, the way that they would just move totally differently was amazing to see. Just just as a, as a bystander to watch them, like you were not gonna stop them. If they had to get up, they had to get to their baby, you were not gonna stop them. That is because they felt like they needed to be there. They were gonna find a way, there was gonna be no excuses, because you could imagine they have all the excuses in the world. I've got all of these IVs hooked up to me, they saw the catheter a lot of times, um, they are in so much pain. You know, there, there are so many excuses that they could have made that they didn't because they needed to go and see their baby. That's the difference between a, um, a want, like a nice to have, or a need. And until you feel so strongly about your goals or about the steps you need to take to, to reach your goals, until it feels really, really necessary to do that, it's going to be hard for you to stay committed and stay consistent with it. So we need to do some work in finding your goal that feels really important to you, that you want it worse than any of the discomfort that's gonna to take to get there, okay? You have to want this thing more than you care about the hurdles that it'll take to get there. And then once you want that thing, we break it down into steps. I'm gonna help you with something today, right? right now on this live stream. Um, we're gonna break it down into steps, and you're gonna know that when you follow these steps, it's just like following a recipe. You do one, you do two, you do three. And when you get through those things, you're gonna see that you're getting so much closer to the goal. But that, that top goal where you wanna get to has to feel so important that you want it so bad that you will, you will fight your way out of excuses. Like those women, you'll tell yourself, that you're not in pain or that you are in pain and you don't care, you're gonna do it anyway. That's when you are on fire and on path to get to exactly what you want. Um, the other thing that I wanna keep in mind, want you to keep in mind is that a lot of times people think that when they're not doing something that they wanna do, there's no harm in it. It's just waiting another day, another day. So let's keep using working out as an example. So you don't work out today, no big deal, I'll just work out tomorrow. The truth is, what you're doing is wiring in your brain and it's making that connection easier to happen again and again and again. So if you don't work out today, you are doing something. The thing that you're doing is not working out and what you're doing is you're making it easier to not work out again tomorrow and to not work out again the next day. So it's okay, it's okay if you've lived all of your life not working out. Um, and if, if your thing is not working out, we can do this with anything. I'm just trying to pick an example. But um, if overeating, if you've overeaten your whole entire life, right? That's the way that you take care of your emotions. Um, that's fine. Wherever you're at today, all I'm saying is now is the time to change it. Because the longer you go doing these habits or not doing these habits that you want to do, the longer you go living your life the way that you don't want it to go, the harder it's going to be to back out of that. That's how habits work. Okay, so let's think about um, an open field. So it's like a very grassy open field. And you start on one side of the field and you cut your way across, okay? The first time that you do it, you really could have taken any path and it would have all been the same. The next time, maybe the grass is a little bit lower where you walked, so you walk that same path again. You walk it again and you walk it again. And after six months, maybe the grass starts to wear out in that path that you walked. And after a year, maybe there's no grass there at all, okay? You're just grooving 
this is what happens in your brain. You're making it easier and easier for your brain to make the connection to do the thing that you're doing. So whether that be that you're skipping workouts when you told yourself you were going to, or whether that be that you are um, overeating as a means to cope with stress or boredom, these are no, nothing to be ashamed of. These are things that everybody has experience with doing at least one point of, or another. But when it gets to that point where you've groove that path and that becomes the go-to where you're not even thinking about it, right? It's like when you're driving home from work and it's the thousandth day of work and you get home and you're like, I don't even remember driving because you go the same route every single day and it's, it's a habit. You don't have to think about it. It just happens. Well, that's going to happen when you grab the bag of chips every night when you sit down um, to watch TV. You're going to do it without even thinking about it. You're going to get to the bottom of the chips and you're going to say, I don't even remember tasting any of those chips, right? Or you're gonna tell yourself again that you're gonna work out today, the end of the day is gonna come, you didn't work out. It's not part of your habit. Your habit is actually to not work out, so you have to break those things. And in order to break those things, you have to have that goal that feels so important that all the discomfort that's gonna come between now and then, all of the excuses that are gonna pop up are not gonna be nearly as important as achieving that goal. All right, so. I want you to think about a couple of things here. There is a cycle, a loop, that goes on every single time anything happens in our lives, in our head, in any of the results that we have. And whatever your goals are that you want to achieve that haven't been achieved yet can fall into one of these pieces of the cycle. There's five parts here, okay? So you've got your situation. Situation is where things are at right now. These are just facts. Um, you are X amount of pounds. It's just a fact. You um, have whatever financial situation going on. I make X amount of dollars a year. It's a fact. These are just facts. There are no opinions. There's no feelings. It's not a positive or negative thing. It's just a situation of your life. You're going through a divorce, whatever. It could be good or bad. There's no, there's no opinions, right? What happens then is that we put a thought on that. And when we put a thought to the situation, it leads us to a feeling. So um, let's say the weight. You could say, I, am, I weigh 200 pounds. And maybe to you, you feel like you wanna weigh 180 pounds. So when you think about weighing 200 pounds, you put a thought on there like, oh, that's 20 pounds more than I should weigh, okay? So the situation is the fact, no opinions on it, the thought now is you judging that fact, either positively or negatively. That thought that you have will lead you to a feeling. That feeling could be, it's, it's a one word thing. You're sad, you're frustrated, you're confused, you're happy, you're joyful, you're anxious, whatever. That thought that you have leads you to a feeling. Now that feeling is really important because from that feeling, we will take action or not take action. Um, if we're angry, we might act out by yelling or something. Um, if we're uh, feeling frustrated or confused, we might act out by eating a whole bag of chips, which kind of leads us back to the beginning of the situation, right? This could be a vicious cycle. So you've got a situation that is just completely neutral, not positive or negative. Then you've got a thought about it, which is your own judgment about your situation. From that thought, you get a feeling. This feeling is either a positive feeling or a negative feeling. We all experience the full spectrum of feelings, right? This is a human thing, but you can also kind of control a little bit how often you've got these positive or negative. So if you're more negative, you can certainly make it more positive more of the time. From that feeling, you can decide if, what action you take or maybe you don't take any action. Um, so you could decide that, let's go back to the same example. I'm 200 pounds, that's the situation. The um, thought, the judgment about that is, oh, but I really should weigh 180 pounds. Um, so the feeling that I get from that now is, that I'm feeling um, unmotivated because I feel like I should have done this before. And so from that feeling of being unmotivated, what I decide to do then about it is nothing. So that's the action. I actually choose 
no action in this example. And that action or inaction leads you to your results. So that's the fifth part of this. And your result is your results. You can imagine what that is. So now the result is I, my weight doesn't change. My situation doesn't change. Or the result is I actually now put on weight and it goes right back into the cycle before and before. So the good news is you can intervene at almost any point of the cycle, um, and the best place to do it is to change your thought patterns around your situation. So learning to accept where you're at and still be okay with wanting to change it, those things can happen at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive, so you can accept that you are a certain weight or your financial situation is a certain way or this or that, you can accept it and also want to change it, okay? Because when you come from those positive feelings, so you've got situation, thoughts, feelings, once we're here on the third part, from those positive feelings is where you're gonna make those positive actions which are gonna lead you to the positive results. So you can intervene and you can change your results. Then your results become your new situation. So let's try a new way with the same example. I weigh 200 pounds, that's my situation. My thought is, instead of judging myself negatively for this, my thought is, that's okay, that's what I weigh, and I can change it. That leads me to a feeling of feeling hopeful, which leads me to an action of actually taking action here. So now I'm going to um, commit to a workout regimen or look into changing my eating patterns, whatever. So many things that can happen here in this action, which leads me to a different result. Maybe you drop five pounds over the next two weeks or month. Maybe you don't even drop weight yet, but you feel like your energy is increasing and you just know that you are making positive changes and you've got positive momentum going, okay? But now let's just say you did. Let's say over the next month now you dropped five pounds because you took action, so you dropped five pounds. Now your new situation is, I weigh 195 pounds. And your new thought is, I know for a fact I can do this because I just did this for the last month. And your new uh, feeling is super motivated and your new result is you lose another five pounds. You see where I'm going there? It's a cycle that you can intervene at any point. And by the way, if weight loss is not your thing, you can, you can take this whole cycle and you can plug anything into it. It can be seriously any goal that you wanna go after, anything in your life that you wish that you could change. You can apply this whole cycle to. All right, so I'm gonna tell you it once more before I move on. So you've got a situation, that's the thing that just is. You've got the thought, and that's your, your judgment about the situation. You've got your feeling, which is that one word feeling, happy, sad, frustrated, whatever, that results from your thought. Because of this feeling, you take an action or you don't take an action. And then because of that action or inaction, you have a result. So that's how you can plug in anything. I would love, love, love to hear if there is anything that you are working on right now, especially if it's a health goal, but even if it's not a health goal, that you're going to apply this cycle to and to see if you can help. I would love to help you work through the cycle too um, if you're confused about where to plug things in. This thing could change your, your life. Like it's really that awesome. This whole cycle could really change any aspect of your life. So the thing is also that you set the bar where you wanna set the bar. So talking about whether it's necessary to work out or necessary to stop overeating or necessary to take any action at all is up to you. But wherever point that you've set the bar at, that's where it's gonna be easier to go from, from now on, right? So it's kind of like the path I was telling you, the grassy path, and you're grooving it and you're grooving it, and now the wires are connecting in your brain and it's going to be a habit that's instilled in you, okay? You can change it, but just know that that habit, the more times you travel down that habit loop, the, the easier it's going to be to do it. So a lot of times we go right up until the point that we've done before. So if we've always overeaten, um, uh, let's say in response to a certain emotion, that's gonna be the quick thing to do. If you're an overeater when you're sad, you're probably not gonna turn to drugs tomorrow, because you've always turned to the food, which by the way, is great, right? Like of all the things that you can be addicted to, if you're addicted to food or if you just have this unhealthy relationship where you kind of overuse food um, for your emotions, 
that's, that's like the best thing that you could do. So instead of beating yourself up, you could start by thanking yourself or appreciating the fact that you've turned to something that is less harmful than other, than a lot of other addictions. Okay. Um, so sorry, I'm just reading my notes here to make sure <laughs> to make sure I got everything. So you, you get to decide who you need to be to get to that goal that you feel is necessary. So once you've got that fire in your belly that you want to get that necessary goal, that you feel it's important, you feel that you have to attain it, and you're done moving the the things over to the next day's to-do list, okay? You decide you really want to build some muscle, you really need to work out in order to do that, and you're not going to take working out and cross it off and move it to tomorrow's to-do list. It's something that has to happen. When you feel that fire in your belly, you are going to be really ready to start. And having a plan in place is important because we can't like white knuckle our way through. We can't just rely on willpower. We can't just say that we're trying to do something. I laugh with my husband a lot of times because we both know that if one of us says like, I'm gonna try to, um, I'm gonna try to get up early tomorrow and do X, Y, Z. Once we've said that, we know that we, we're not doing it probably. Or there's, I would say, a 50% chance or less that that thing is gonna happen. Once you give yourself that little bit of wiggle room, it's not happening. So you can't will yourself to it. You can't white knuckle your way through it. You can't say you're gonna try. You can't say you hope X, Y, or Z is going to change. If you don't have a strategy, it's not gonna change. So. How do we do this? Here's the real work, okay? You're gonna break down the thing that you want to do. So this is your goal. This is the goal that you feel like you need to do. This is the necessary part, okay? You're gonna break it down into specific skills. So for example, if you wanna lose 20 pounds, you're not gonna say I wanna lose 20 pounds and then you're gonna say how do I break that goal down? Well, first I'm gonna lose two pounds, and then I'm gonna lose two more, and then I'm gonna lose two more. No, that's not telling you anything about how to get to it, right? So if you wanna say, I wanna lose 20 pounds, or I wanna feel better in my skin, or it, whatever your goal is, you gotta break it down into the skills necessary to get you to that goal. Um, and then you're gonna build upon those skills by taking action steps, like very specific targeted action steps that you know that you have to do and put on repeat day after day after day. Those are practices, okay? Those are your habits that you're gonna practice, those are your practices. Um, when, you, when you practice daily to build these skills, you're building skills to get yourselves to those goals, okay? So it's practices, building the skills, the skills build the goals. So, you can use this for anything. I use this to help women lose weight, to build strength, and to have a healthier relationship around food. You can use it for anything that you want to achieve. So let's say the goal, again, is to lose weight. I use this goal a lot, by the way, because it's the goal that most people come to me with. And I do like a, I don't want to say it's a bait and switch, but it's a little bit of a bait and switch. You come to me wanting to lose weight, and I will give you that weight loss, and I'm also gonna give you the health along with it. I will never, ever, ever help anybody lose weight if I'm not helping them get healthier in the process. If what happens is we're getting you healthier and the weight starts to fall off as a result, that's what I will do, and that's it. I'm not gonna do anything that's unhealthy for you, okay? Um, so I use, this, I use this as an example a lot, but I also want you to know that I don't think you need to lose weight. If you come to me, I have people come to me and say, you know why I'm here, right? Like and I look at them, no, I have no idea why you're here. Why are you here? Well, obviously, I need to lose weight. That's not obvious to me. It's not obvious to me that you need to lose weight because until you tell me that there's a problem, it's just the situation, right? The thing that we don't put an opinion on. If you come to me and you are feeling fabulous and your blood work is fine and your blood pressure is okay and you are really confident in your skin and you've got tons of energy and all those things, it's not a problem then. But if you come to me and you say you want to change it, you want to lose weight because you um, aren't able to move around as well as you used to or you notice that you, you have a lack of energy or a lack of motivation um, you're feeling depressed, you're lacking in confidence. Whatever your reason is, if you want to change it because it's a problem, then I want to change it because it's a problem for you. But it's not an obvious thing to me. If you come to me and say, you know why I'm here. No, I don't know why you're here. You have to tell me why you're here. Um, okay, so let's say, that was a little 
tangent, um, let's say your goal is to lose weight, okay? And let's say we decide that the skill you'll need to get there, one of them, one of the first ones, is to eat better more consistently, okay? That's the skill that you need. We're going to break that skill down because that's kind of... Um, like an overarching thing. That's not very specific and actionable. We have to break that down so that you know exactly what you're doing. So you wanna eat better consistently, but you don't have the skills to do that yet. How do I know that? Because you're not doing it. I know you don't have the skills if you're not doing it. So you can certainly have access to all the free information in the world online, but if you're not doing the thing, it's not knowledge that you're missing, usually the vast majority of the time. It's not knowledge that you're missing. If you have a goal and you're not achieving it, you need the skill set to be able to achieve it. It's usually not that you need the knowledge, okay? So here's how we break it down. What skills do you need to be able to eat better consistently then? Okay, so you say you wanna lose weight. We decide that you need to focus on eating better consistently, that that's gonna be like the main hurdle for you. And then we break that down into the skills that make that up. Hunger and appetite awareness, okay, is the most, most, most important place to start, okay? So you want to lose weight. We know that you need to eat better consistently, and we know that starting on hunger and appetite awareness is going to be key for you, okay? So we break it down into the daily habits, the practices, okay? So we might start with practicing eating more slowly, Okay, because when you eat more slowly, you give your body a chance for its own um, very smart system of telling you when it's full, when it's satisfied, to kick in. If you eat fast, you're overriding the chance for your body to tell you, I'm full now. And then that's when we start feeling stuffed afterwards, that heavy bloating feeling, that Thanksgiving feeling, I call it. Um, but you might do that on a smaller scale all the time if you are eating your meals in five minutes or seven minutes, okay? So we might practice eating more slowly. We might practice eating only when truly hungry. So we dive into that. That gets a little bit deeper because most of us eat for reasons other than hunger. We want it because it tastes good, it smells good, it's a habit of ours, we're eating through our emotions, we don't want to feel certain things, okay? But that's a practice, eating only when truly hungry. We might practice that one for a bit. Um, and then we might practice stopping when satisfied and not stuffed. Okay, so then you're, you're eating slowly, now you're able to slow down and think about, am I really, really hungry? And then on the other end, we're gonna start thinking about, am I really, really satisfied? When did that hunger disappear for me? I don't have to keep eating now, okay? Those are three very specific things, and we might give it two weeks for each one. Two weeks, I know. That's six weeks, okay? That's six weeks of us practicing these habits that you're focusing on one at a time. That's the only way it's successful, is practicing one at a time. Once you've mastered the first, we move to the second, and then we move to the third. Six weeks of you saying, but we didn't even talk about what a protein is. You didn't even tell me what carbs I should be eating. You didn't even kill me in the gym yet, right? And yet, Guess what? You'll probably notice massive results and you'll have that foundation to build upon for the future. So that's the whole idea that you can do for yourself. You don't need to hire me, okay? You can do this for yourself. You can take a piece of paper um, and you can, and in fact, I actually have a uh, something to help you. I have a little worksheet to do. So make sure, I'm gonna drop how you can do this in the comments. Um, make sure that you are on my email list and inside my private Facebook groups. My email list is taraallenhealth.com. When you go there, right there on the homepage, it says sign up for email. You'll get a free infographic right away. You'll get my recipes, all that stuff, but I'm also gonna send you this companion worksheet that's gonna go along with what I'm talking about today. We're gonna discuss this and more inside my private Facebook group today, so make sure you join that. That's called Lean In with Tara Allen Health, okay? I'll drop links here after the video. So. You wanna get on my email list, taraallenhealth.com. Tell your friends if they could benefit from this too. And inside my private Facebook group, Lean In with Tara Allen Health. Okay, so I'm gonna send you that worksheet so you can break this down for yourself. But basically you're going to think of your goal, okay? That's my, I wanna lose 20 pounds. You're gonna think of the next level 
that's gonna help you get there, your sticking point, well, if I can eat better more consistently, that's going to help me lose the 20 pounds. Okay, now that's actionable. That's something that you can actually control. You can't control losing 20 pounds, but you can control eating better more consistently, which will ultimately lead you to that 20 pound weight loss anyway. Then you're gonna break it down into skills that you need in order to get to that. So that's where we did um, hunger and appetite awareness, and you need to break that down even more. So what does hunger and appetite awareness mean? Well, we're gonna eat more slowly first, master it, not like for one day, for two weeks at least. We're gonna do step number two, which is eating only when truly hungry, and we're gonna do step number three, which is, um, stopping when satisfied and not full, okay? This is not the same for everybody. You can have other goals up here. You can have other um, points where you want to interject and change, other things that you feel uh, will more quickly get you towards your goal, okay? The whole idea is that you're just following this whole system where you're, what's your ultimate goal? How do you break that down? How do you make that into skills that you can actually practice on a daily basis, okay? So, that's it. That's it. I was going to get into something else. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll post this inside my um, Facebook group after because it's a whole other thing. It's the 5S formula that's going to help you be successful too. If you want to hear about the 5S formula that's just going to kind of piggyback on what I was just talking about, make sure you're in my group, Lean In with Tara Allen Health, and I'm going to be talking about that one today in there. Um, so... Grab that companion worksheet and start to do these goals yourself. You know, this, this worksheet will help you um, put a visual to what I was talking about and help you actually put pen to paper. I like that. I like pen to paper. I love the computer, but I think pen to paper is just one of those old school things that, that really like lets you flow out all your thoughts. So um, this will be something that you can print out and you can actually pen to paper write out your goals, have your action steps ready, and I'm happy to help you. If you have trouble and you're, you're stuck on where to break these things down, post a comment here. Let me know. Post a comment inside my um, private group and we'll work on it together, okay? I do these videos because I love them. I do these videos because I know that they're helping people. Um, people send me messages and emails and tell me how they're helping you and I will continue to do it forever as long as I can. Um, I want to help people even if you are not ready or not able to hire me to work with you. I still would like to help you. So please don't feel shy about shooting me a comment, tagging me, and letting me help you in the process, okay? Whatever it is that you have been wanting to get, whatever goal that you have, if you feel like it's necessary, when you feel like it's necessary to get to that, then everything else is just going to be a matter of breaking it down, you know, having a plan and going after it because that's the point where you have the fire and nothing can stop you, okay? I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.